Okay, when you hear the words financial planning, investment options probably come to mind, but there are actually several other areas to dive into when planning for your retirement that are all just as important, if not more important, as an investment piece of your puzzle. Here to talk about income planning for retirement is Chris Hobart. Chris is Charlotte's premier wealth manager and one of Retirement Advisor Magazine's recent top financial <laughs> advisors of the year finalists. Chris, good morning. Great mm -hmm. to see you as always. Uh, good morning, guys. Um, when it comes to retirement planning, your goal is to make sure that the retirees' monthly expenses can be paid for the rest of their life. Is mm -hmm. that correct? That, that is. And if you think about it, uh, the number one fear for Americans today is that they're not going to have enough money wow. to live through retirement. Mm -hmm. And now, if you really break this down, we've got 10,000 baby boomers a day retiring. 10,000 a day for the next decade. Mm. And when we really look at these numbers, we've got a population that is having to uh, wait for retirement. About 30% of that population is extending their retirement time frame. About 44% of that population still has debt in retirement. About 56% of that population, well, they're gonna count on Social Security alone. And about 44% of that population, guess what? They don't have any savings whatsoever. Mm. So I can see why people are worried about that. Our goal at Hobart Financial Group is really to make sure that we don't just answer the question, will I have enough money for retirement? But we show people that have done a good job of saving how they can actually restructure what they have to become more tax efficient and really last as long as they do. Well, to have that last as long as they do, you've mm -hmm. got to have some reliable sources of income. And so we need to talk about Social Security maximization. Yeah. First thing, right? Yeah. And, you know, we hear a lot about this on the radio and on TV. Maximize your Social Security. The reality is it's all the same software. And it all tells us the same thing. You can start as early as 62, but you should wait till 70. And if you're married, there's a couple of tricks you can do. That's right. My bigger concern is that most of those, actually all of those that I've ever seen, those platforms, don't take into account taxation. And if you've done a good job of saving money in IRAs, 401ks, or outside accounts, and you're going to be taking Social Security, it's not just about waiting as long as you can. It's about maximizing Social Security with taxes in mind, because taxes can play a huge role inside of Social Security. Most people think uh, Social Security is tax-free. Not the case at all. Mm -hmm. It's taxable. So when you're looking to maximize, really make sure you're maximizing the whole picture and also understand what it means for that uh, for your spouse to inherit that money as well and the taxation on that as well. All right. Another thing you take a look at at Hobart Financial Group, income and expense analysis. Exactly. You know, we were talking about this a mm -hmm. little bit earlier today. A lot of times people, they, they know how to live off their paychecks because you got that coming in. But when you retire, you're raising your hand. No more paychecks coming in. Uh, so the general rule of thumb has always been, well, you're going to live off 70% of your paycheck. So count for that. The reality is any retired person I know, they tend to front and load their expenses in retirement travel, having fun, so on and so forth. And later years of retirement, you can shrink down the expenses or increase with medical. So when we're really talking about looking at income and expenses, it's more than just simply saying, hey, let's live off of 70%. It's actually creating kind of a customized map to say, okay, when are we going to spend more? What are the rail lines that we want to be within to make sure we're not overspending? And when we can, if we have a little bit extra money left, let's give us permission to enjoy our retirement a little bit more as well. Okay, well now when it comes to inflation, how does inflation eat up your money in retirement? Well, a couple of ways. You know, historically, inflation is about 3.1%. Exactly. Uh, recently, the government tells us inflation is not a factor in anything, which means that Social Security doesn't really get much or any of cost of living adjustment. So that's one area. But the reality is most people are going to be in retirement these days. 20, 25, 30 years, which is longer than historically we've ever seen people in retirement. Because of that, the cost of something today is going to cost twice as much 20 years from now, if not more. You have got to calculate that inflation is going to be a major impact for, for you if you're retiring today. Mm -hmm. More importantly, health care costs, that's outpacing inflation substantially, which means into the future, that actually might be medical inflation, the, the bigger storyline for most people retiring today. Mm. So let me say quickly, so I'll be putting money away for inflation to, to account for that? Well, yes, but you've also got to make sure that when you have money put away, it's not just sitting in the mattress or earning low interest rates. The reality is interest rates are extremely low right now and people want to keep their money in safety. They got burnt with the stock market crash a couple years back and people are nervous. The problem is that money is not even getting a fighting chance to keep up with inflation. It's what we call a slow crash. Stock market gives you a fast crash. Low interest earnings gives you a slow crash based upon inflation eating away at the value of your money. 
Okay, you also talk about a spousal plan. Yeah, you know what? A lot of times we make our plans together as spouses. My wife and I do the same thing, but we have to keep in mind that very seldom do people pass away at the exact same moment. Mm -hmm. uh, and when we talk about that, how is the spouse impacted? Uh, is there a pension that gets lost or cut in half? What about Social Security? Mm -hmm. But most importantly, you have got to realize that when one spouse passes away, the other spouse goes into the single tax bracket, which means they might have less income coming in, but they actually might be into a higher tax bracket gotcha. simply because of the income that is coming in, and they might actually have significantly less income in their pocket, net income, mm -hmm. simply because of the tax bracket that they find themselves in. Chris and his team can help you with all of this. If it's time for you to focus on income planning for your retirement, call Chris Hobart. Or if you're already retired and want to make sure that your savings will last as long as you do, call Chris Hobart. He's offering his HFG financial blueprint to the first 10 qualified callers. The number is 704-553-0123. Again, 704-553-0123. Five five three zero one two three. This is a complimentary investment review to ensure that you're on the right financial track. You must have at least two hundred fifty thousand dollars in assets to qualify. Again, the number seven zero four five five three zero one two three. Chris Hobart from Hobart Financial Group. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys. Thank you, sir.